I think it is in the p dot term. Uh, hmm? uh, is it in the p dot term? Uh, the p dot uh, uh, by which uh, uh, we actually uh, considering it. Uh, it is in equilibrium. Uh, in dual number principle, uh, we consider that uh, the particle is in equilibrium, and uh, yeah, if for any virtual displacement, it will. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's the interpretation of. In general, uh, in general, uh, the force on the particle is not actually zero, uh, and that's why we consider a p dot term. We are giving an extra force. So, on that particle, uh, considering that it is in equilibrium, uh, so I think this p dot term uh, actually uh, gives this initial condition. Where did you get that p dot term? I did not get it then. Tell uh, me some equation that you are talking about. Uh, I, oh yeah, I will ask it later. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a, uh, another question about the velocity dependent potential. Um, if we can define a velocity dependent potential, then the Lagrange, the form of the Lagrange, Lagrange equation preserves. Actually, <laughs> actually, we are clever about that. So, in principle, you can always have have an equation for a system, right? Hmm? You can yeah. always have an equation for a system. So that might or might not be a like looks like your Lagrangian, right? So we call it Lagrangian formulation yeah. when, when your equation of motion is actually that del DDT of delta L by delta Q dot minus D DL by DQ equals to zero. So we actually tweak about your L, nothing else. Uh, that means uh, for certain velocity dependent potentials, we can have Lagrange equation. Otherwise, we can. Yes, yes, yes. So velocity dependent potential is defined such a way, like it is even no, not defined when you cannot write in terms of those. Like uh, you find your potential, so you say this is my velocity dependent potential, and you use that in your t minus v to construct your Lagrangian. You substitute into Lagrange's equation and find your equation of motion. And that equation of motion is not quite the one you, your system has. So then your system actually doesn't pause, possess a velocity dependent potential or you picked the wrong one. You get that? Uh, can you refresh it? I didn't get that. Okay. So uh, actually there are several steps. So number one, you have a system. Hmm? You, you defined. A potential that is a q dot dependent, hmm? and you use that to yeah. define your l equals to t minus v, hmm? and then you use yeah. your Lagrange's equation like delta l by delta q k equals to d d t of delta l by delta q k dot, and you substitute that l here, and you find your equation of motion. Hmm? Also, you apply your yeah. Newton's law say f equal ma for the same system same system you apply f equal ma and then you find your equation of motion and you say that those do not matter then the potential you defined is plain wrong oh, so you yeah see I got it. the definition of lagrangian is itself uh, <laughs> What is, what is the definition of Lagrangian? The definition is, Lagrangian is that when you substitute that thing in Lagrange's equation, it creates the correct equation of motion. Yeah. Hmm? So we'll see now, Lagrangian is not unique, number one. So we have our Lagrange's equation. We have um, our Lagrangian yeah. delta K. Yes. Delta L by delta Q K equals to DDT of delta L by delta Q K dot. Hmm? Question is, we have a standard prescription. Standard prescription. That is L equals to T minus V. Hmm? 
but question is is that the only way we can construct a lagrangian answer is no say you have like you have your standard prescription t minus v and that creates the correct equation of motion hmm? then if you change your lagrangian to be l equals to l prime equals to l plus df over dt where f is a function of coordinate only coordinate and time only then that l prime is also a correct lagrangian that produces the correct equation of motion we can prove it that's easy to prove so say this thing is correct say this is correct we are saying that if this is correct is this correct delta l by delta q k uh, equals to ddt over delta l by delta q k dot q, uh, is this correct this is our question hmm? or basically we are trying to prove this minus that is this equals to zero hmm? if this thing equals to zero if this thing equals to zero again then it's also like l prime is also the correct lagrangian i'll give an example then it will be clear actually uh, we when we but do if, um, hmm? but if we add a function and nothing changes why would we do, do that because we can uh, it's some sometimes simplify the calculation no no because we can <laughs> okay question is is your lagrangian unique answer is no no that's why we are doing that mm. yeah simply we can actually we we'll understand later why why actually we are trying to do that it has a great deal of physics inside of it but you're not that in position yet so we are not we are not there yet uh, oh, but okay. in em let's, uh, let's check it first well so we can uh, define uh, the potential uh, from uh, any reference so uh, we can always uh, add some constant uh, and it does mm -hmm. not matter and yes. uh, well uh, then uh, how can we uh, apply the time dependent part okay so df over dt this part is actually like adding a constant thing constant potential is a special case of that thing so if you have like sub constant alpha my multiplied by t so your f hmm, then your df over dt equals to alpha so this is a special case of what you're like uh, what you're saying is a special case of this general thing already you can add some constant to with your lagrangian and your equation of motion is pretty much correct uh, absolutely correct not just pretty much it's totally correct but how much you can change your lagrangian but you still get the correct equation that's the answer is this your uh, you can add a total time derivative of some coordinate dependent function this function cannot be a dependent on cannot be dependent on velocity if you consider q dot as well inside of it then it don't work lagrangian is non unique that's true but how, but how, how much how much is that non unique so I, i'll i'll show you examples then we'll understand so let's prove it first then so our quest is uh L satisfies the Lagrange's equation, and that that is the correct equation of motion. This thing is correct. We are considering this and checking if if you substitute L prime equals to L plus df over dt, is that big? Uh, is that correct as well? So, ddt or instead of like L prime, we substitute delta delta q dot of L L plus df by dt, right? So we can separate. So it this equals to like delta delta q l minus ddt of 
delta L by delta Q K dot plus delta delta Q K uh, D F over D T minus D D T uh, of delta delta Q K dot D F over D T. So as L is the correct Lagrangian, we already know this thing is satisfies. So this thing has to be zero, right? By Lagrange's equation. Yeah. And so what about the other part? So we are left with delta delta QK DF over DT minus DDT delta delta QK dot df over dt hmm? so expand df over dt so you'll have delta delta qk that's fine then you will have sum over i delta f by delta qi qi dot plus delta f by delta t and then similarly minus ddt uh delta delta qk dot uh, this term will be zero because uh, f is independent of q dot let's see if it is zero or not f is independent of q dot but df over dt is not if it were uh, a okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but it's, it's a, yes it's there will be q dot k term yes but can't so, we use uh, cancellation of dots here? Uh, I think we can, yeah. I think we can. I think we can, yeah. So basically, if dot over this thing, those dot cancel out. And so basically, that's what we are proving. Hmm? Yeah. So this is what you have. So if you take derivatives, if you take derivatives, so um, you have your um, delta delta QK sum over I delta F by delta QI. Uh, actually, we can uh, th these are partial derivatives, so we can switch. Switch and Q and Q dot are totally independent. So you can write like this. QI delta delta QI on delta F by delta QK by switching the derivative also delta delta T on delta F by delta QK. You can write like that. Hmm? Minus DDT of this whole thing. So if you take derivative, uh, you get DDT on sum over I delta f by delta qi and then Kronecker delta ik, right? Yeah. Again, look, here we have delta, uh, uh, sorry, qi dot delta delta qi, delta f by delta qi. Uh, so collecting these two things, actually n plus one thing, we get ddt, of delta f by delta qk right yeah hmm? so consider this thing as a single piece so you can expand this thing and get the above equation so minus ddt so if you uh, perform the summation sum over i gives you delta f by delta k qk which is obviously c so that means if some Lagrangian, whatever method you found, if some Lagrangian works, it gives the correct UM equation of motion, then L prime, which is defined by L plus DF over DT, where F can be any arbitrary function of coordinate and time, then this thing also produces correct equation of motion. Let's, let, let me give you some example. So 
consider an harmonic oscillator consider an harmonic oscillator simple harmonic oscillator what is the kinetic energy of the system uh 1 by 2 mv square this is considered as x, x and block x dot, x dot. so One. t would be half uh, mass is m x dot is square this would be the kinetic energy right uh, yeah half m x dot is square that would be the kinetic energy what's the potential energy uh half k x square half k x squared you all know that hmm? so lagrangian would be oh, half okay. m dot square minus half k x squared hmm? yeah, yes if if you can uh cho choose arbitrary any uh origin so uh Mm -hmm. For for an arbitrary origin, uh, it, it contributes uh, x dependent term, uh, x dependent term, and uh, yeah. it should not uh, affect the physics. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's quite uh, intuitive. Okay, so so what's the equation of motion if you get so um, one side we have delta L over delta x. What's that? Uh, just minus k. So this equation is delta 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 l over delta x equals to uh, the force, delta l over delta x dot. Hmm. So delta l over delta x is minus k x, right? Because yeah. this part doesn't have any x inside of it. This has x which is squared. So negative k x. Hmm. Also delta l by delta x dot. What's that? Uh, it's a momentum n x dot. N x dot. Take derivative. So if this part doesn't have any, so our equation of motion is DDT of this thing. So that is m x double dot equals to negative k x. This is our okay. equation of motion. Let's change our Lagrangian a little bit. Consider uh, a simpler thing like uh, uh, x minus x dot to square. Let's x to the power four like. Or doesn't matter. Consider some arbitrary function of x. It could be anything. Any arbitrary thing it could be. Hmm? Okay. Doesn't matter. X cube x to the power. Of x. So let, let's consider like f of x equals to x square plus uh, x cube sine x cubed e to the power negative x squared. Let's say our f of x is this. Hmm? Let's try this now, if this thing works or not. Hmm? So now, uh, what would be our delta L by delta X now? That would be obviously negative KX plus DF over DX, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, is, uh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. It has to be like some time derivative. Time. Yeah, it should, should be a time derivative of something. Hmm? Yeah. So uh, let's do this. Our f of x is this. So if you take time derivative, uh, total time derivative we need. Mm -mm -mm. The first term was uh, okay, I think, uh, because uh, hmm? the first term was okay, I think, because it's time derivative, uh, not integration or integral of with respect to time. No, this ha this thing has to be like a whole function of whole whole time derivative. So it it cannot have any form. It. It needs to be in specific form, so let's let's write it down. So it has to be like equals to some arbitrary function. D this it has to be, right? Hmm? Yeah. So if we want our f of x to be something, then ca that can be written as ddt. Then at max df over dt. This can be written as like df over dt is delta f over delta x x dot plus delta f over delta t like that it has to be in this form particular uh, why should be time derivative on this? so that's what we proved right 
so lagrangian is uh, like the equation of motion is unchanged if we uh, substitute like l plus df over dt some whole time, total time derivative of something yes. Yes. it cannot be in, in any form the specific form is df over dt it has to be like anything you have that can be written as a whole time derivative so say our um, our uh, f of x um, what can be our f of x then uh, well at first we can define uh, the partial of f with respect to x and uh, then partial of a f with respect to 2 for example uh, partial of it with respect to x is just I, I'm, I'm trying to give an example i'm trying to give an example so so let's let's say our f of x f of x uh, f of uh don't you have freedom here we can choose uh, any function as del yeah. del x any function yes. as del x yes. don't uh, find any function if f of f of x equals to x. So then our Lagrangian is unchanged if we add this term. So df over dt. So that is uh, 3x squared multiplied by x dot. This thing you can add. Right? That is df over dt. Mm, yeah. Partial, yeah. Or you can uh, generalize a little bit like f of xt, let's consider like uh, x cubed plus uh not plus like multiplication same multiplication into t then df over dt what would be that that would be your uh by product rule first it will have x cubed plus 3x squared x dot t you can add that thing as well so let's let's complicate the thing and make it more general so let's we add this part. Uh, yeah, we added this part. This is of the form df over dt. Hmm? Uh, total time derivative of something. So now, now uh, what what would be our like uh, delta l over delta x? What would be our delta l over delta x? Uh, it would be minus kx uh, plus 3x square. 3x square. Uh, uh, plus uh, 6x. 6x. Uh, x, x dot t. x dot t, right. And what would be our like delta L over delta x dot? Uh, just uh, mx this dot. MX, this, yeah, mx dot. Uh, then, mx dot uh, plus 3x square t. Plus, the other part doesn't have any x dot, so only this part, so it is 3x square t. Hmm? Now, let's check if this satisfies. So, ddt on delta L over delta x dot, what's that? This is nothing but mx double dot, plus, now you have to apply uh, product rule, plus 3x squared plus uh, 6x x dot t and this is one side and another side is equals to uh, negative kx plus 3x squared plus 6x x dot t so see this term this term cancel out this term this term cancel out and we are left with mx double dot equals to negative kx so you can see like uh, not uh, like uh, lagrangian is not unique so you can change your lagrangian uh, by amount that is uh, that is a total time derivative of something, then uh, your new Lagrangian still works. It still produces the correct equation of motion. And there are infinitely many ways you can choose your f of t. So for one system, you have infinitely many choice of Lagrangian. Hmm? Can, can f be a function of x dot? No, 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 no. Then it doesn't work. So, okay, it's already 12.55 here, so I have five more minutes.
Oh, well, uh, uh, why uh, sh should uh, we add only time derivative uh, type thing? Uh, why not uh, a function of space and time? Okay, we will uh, we'll see that in the next day. Actually, okay, I do not have any time. So this is due to action. So it 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 doesn't changes the action. Action has a specific form. So if you add df over dt like thing, it doesn't changes that. It doesn't change the action. It changes, but okay, thank you. it changes by a number only. So extremization of the action is that thing that what matters. So that's why. Okay. We'll, we'll see that in the next day. Actually, I had planned to do that today, but I do not have time now. So this thing happens like uh, classical to teach classical mechanics. It takes a lot of time. Also, um, today I proved like uh, derived Lagrange's equation in the most complicated way possible. So it can be simplified a lot. It's not that complicated actually. Are these recordings uh, are being shared? Uh, I'm not sure we are. Yes, uh, I, I shared the first one. I think I'll share the second lecture within a week. Okay. And uh, I don't have any books actually. Uh, so uh, do you have some like a video for something or should I study? Uh, yes. Uh, do you have Facebook account? Yeah, I do have. So you ha we have a like. Uh, <laughs> Facebook group, so that has like these pirated copies of uh, books on uh, soft copies, so you can download some classical mechanics book here. It's not legal, but yeah, this is. So, uh, or library genesis. Yeah, you can, you can, but in uh, US domain, it, uh, you might not get into library genesis so that's a problem so uh, I'll, I'll share the link i share the link to the group in the chat box chat room and the gravitational book which uh, you told us to buy like we have started that book yet yeah right sorry i i the gravitational book mm -hmm. uh, am i audible hello uh yeah it it seems like you're talking from far so that's that's the problem Hello. Yeah. Now I'm audible. Yes. Yes. Now it's way better than that. Yeah. There was something wrong with my headphone. So I was asking, like, the gravitational book which you told us to, like, uh, which you recommended. Mm -hmm. So I haven't bought that book also yet. So, uh, like, uh, we haven't started that book yet, right? No, I, I haven't started. So when will we starting that? Any idea? So three weeks from now. Okay. So today, we so I wanted to cover Noether's theorem today, but I couldn't. So next week we'll cover Noether's theorem and Hamiltonian mechanics, and Jacobi theorem most possibly. So after that, we will take one today, and then we will learn like two-body central force problem in four different approaches. Okay. Well, I have another question. Uh, how can we uh, transform the Q? Uh, How can we transform the Q and uh, the, uh, uh, what will be the Lagrangian in that case? Uh, like if we uh, tra transform from uh, Cartesian to polar, uh, and, and in region. that case, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How can we uh, transform the Lagrangian? Did we impose anything on Q? No, we did not. So Q is already an arbitrary coordinate. So all you need to know the uh, in that coordinate, you need to know the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Uh, well, uh, suppose uh, T is equal to L minus V, and uh, uh, we first expressed uh, L and V in terms of uh, Cartesian coordinate. Then we transform yeah. it into uh, polar, and uh, then uh, the similar equation should be valid for uh, yes. R and uh, phi and, 2. Yes, yes, that's what we did actually. Okay. Okay. So any arbitrary coordinate you transform it into. So uh, for example, for example, like uh, just to, uh, we, we can use a few more minutes, right? So you can use your coordinate transformation to be like uh, for uh, your um, 
harmonic oscillator. So your Lagrangian was L equals to half m uh, x dot square minus half k x squared. Huh? Yeah. So consider a, um, um, a transformation that is uh, like x square equals to y. or the opposite actually. y uh, x equals to y square I think that would be easier x equals to y square so what we what you do is substitute that thing so x dot would be your twice y y dot hmm? so substitute yeah. that thing half m twice y y dot whole squared minus half k what is your x what is the y square Y to the power four. Lagrangian in in y coordinate. So you write this equation: delta L by delta y equals to d t delta L by delta y dot. This is what this will work. Hmm? Check it. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. Check. Okay. So you find the equation of motion here. Also find the equation of motion like this: m x double dot uh, equals to minus k x. So what would um, be your x double dot? What would be your x double dot? Let's we go in minutes. But can you say that um, uh, completely arbitrary coordinate system because um, we uh, the coordinates have to be independent, don't they? Uh, here it's independent. Only one. So we do not call it independent. Actually, we call it invertible. So no, invertible or non-singular means. You choose a coordinate transformation from one system to another, such a way that it actually mixes things up and uh, like you cannot invert it anymore. Uh, you can define such coordinate transformation like uh, say you had two set of coordinate x and y, and you make a transformation like to z coordinate and that is defined as x plus y. So whenever you have z, you cannot invert it to find your x and y uniquely, right? Yeah. So yeah. this transformation, like x x y coordinate to z coordinate, this is not an invertible one or singular one. So this kind of singular uh, coordinate transformation won't help because it's totally crappy. So all you need to do is to find a coordinate transformation that is non-singular or invertible. Or by invertible we mean the Jacobian determinant has uh, like. Non non vanishing uh, value. Now we'll we'll see that later. This kind of stuff will come come frequently actually. So this is this is about more general coordinate transformation, not about Lagrangian. You're talking about actually. Uh, but, but here, I mean, if we, yeah, go um, on. Yes, very. You can ask the question. Um, mm -hmm. but. If if we uh, just consider a cut cut coordinate system and um, we just for example the simple pendulum problem, uh, there mm -hmm. is a constraint. Um, but if we consider x and y two coordinates, but they are not independent completely, uh, yes. can we solve the Lagrangian yes. equation? Yes. Then you have to consider you have to consider Lagrangian mechanics for constraint systems, not free systems. Yeah, that means um, we have to use a coordinate system so that they are, ge they are generalized or um, they have to be co they are already <laughs> to do this formalism to do this uh, unconstrained version of Lagrangian you have to find a coordinate system which is already uh, the maximal that means uh, number of coordinates is equal to the number of, of coordinates is equal to number of degrees of freedom yeah Otherwise, you have to do like that. Uh, or, what do you call it? Uh, for Lagrangian mechanics for constraint systems. So that's also a thing. And uh, constraint can be in many forms. So let's not talk about much uh, here because uh, to teach about constraints, just we can we can spend these twenty four lectures just talking about constraints. This is so big field. There are many classes and types.
Okay, are there any more questions? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, no problem. No, I don't have a question. Actually, the can you share the gravitational book also a PDF or uh, yes, have to uh, share, share over there? Like uh, in that group, you have that. Oh, we have that also. Okay, yes. I need not to then like uh, buy it like as soon as possible, right? No. Okay. But it's better to buy because hard copy. Like it's it's only fifty dollar and like. Okay, I'll try it. Yeah. So yeah, Jabir had a question. Uh, yeah, uh, can we define any relation between x and y, the new coordinate system y? Uh, because here uh, there is only one uh, coordinate mm -hmm. system. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, uh, in, uh, in can this you here. Yeah. This uh, this example I, I was showing this this thing you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for all. Yeah, you can you can try any arbitrary any any arbitrary just one thing um, you have to make sure that uh, it's not singular at any point uh, yeah so, uh, it it actually will work uh, i i have solved this yeah obviously it will work we we made it generally as expected right? yeah so but still remember lagrangian mechanics doesn't produce the all most general transformation possible Lagrangian mechanics cannot make the most general transformation possible. So we'll do that in the Hamilton name actually. Okay. Lagrangian can transform between coordinate to coordinate only. In Hamiltonian, we'll do coordinate and momentum. They will in both with the, uh, they will call that phase space and we'll do transform on phase space. And that's the interesting thing or magic happens. And eventually, probably next day, we'll find such a transformation that uh, probably for this harmonic oscillator system, you had your initial momenta coordinate something, and we'll transform it into some new coordinate and momenta. Those are all constants. Yeah. Both coordinate and momenta are constants. Yeah. So that kind of transformation we can do with Hamiltonian. So we'll see that in later time. Okay, any, any question? Uh, no, I'm So today's class, was it a little bit fast or it was like you were able to follow? I think it was too much mathematics, right? Like too much coordinate transformations. Yeah. yeah. I was able to follow, but yeah, math there was a lot of mathematics. Yeah, so uh, if you need a uh, reference, so for this class, just follow this thing. Classical mechanics by Goldstein. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, so see you next week. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you.